Hey guys, Scanner Danner here with son Caleb Danner behind the camera. Thank you, Caleb, for helping me out again today. As you can see, it is a nice, warm, sunny day here in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, what we're doing first is quick check for a head gasket failure on this Suzuki behind us. Uh, it has had a, um, I think you said the rad went, Pete? Yeah. The rad went, it blew. And then it got um, a water pump, rad, and thermostat. It's still overheating, so there's two checks really we wanna do. Uh, number one is does the cooling fan come on? And then number two, we're gonna do a quick block test and we're using a chemical kit uh, made by Lyle. I, I had uh, Pete go buy this for me. Why is, we're, we're missing the squeeze ball. Okay, so a little learning curve here on this kit. It's different than the one I have, uh, but that's the first thing we're doing today is this head gasket. So the little learning curve here on this kit is it doesn't have the little ball that you squeeze to pull in the um, air. And uh, what you do is you connect it uh, to a vacuum source. So I just um, got a vacuum line down here and that goes right to my intake manifold. And so we're gonna connect that to there. And now we got airflow pulling through this. If I can let you guys hear it on the mic. So a little bit different than what I'm used to for sure. Um, but that's kind of cool. I had Pete fill this up, but the problem is we, um, went a little bit too full with it uh, so again two things i want to make sure the cooling fan comes on given the history of what was done the radiator went bad uh, leaked everywhere the car overheated so it, uh, I, i'm not certain why the water pump was replaced but it got a water pump thermostat and rad and um, it is overheating did they say it's overheating in traffic or just in general? One day when it was freezing, when it was minus, whatever, he jumped in it and drove it and it overheated. And we don't know if it overheated. I don't know, I don't know if it overheated. It's sitting in traffic or, I'm, I'm worrying about the cooling fan is why I ask. So if a car overheats only in traffic but does not overheat while you're driving it, that suggests a cooling fan problem. Remember that, Caleb, that's important. Can you sit in there and put it, hold it at like 1,500, two grand for me? I want this coolant level to go down a little bit. I mean, we could use the overflow bottle too. Just kind of looking for bubbles. I'm not seeing any combustion bubbles there. If it was excessively bubbling right now, that's a, a suggestion that you have a head gasket failure. And what that means is we're getting combustion gases into the cooling system, and that shouldn't happen. I'm gonna put this lid on, we're gonna let this warm up. Connect to any vacuum source is what we're doing. It says indicating fluid changes from blue to yellow when exposed to combustion gases. Connect hose to any vacuum line, place tapered end of the tool into the rad opening. Vehicle vacuum draws vapors through indicating fluid. You get a shot of that tailpipe too. Another thing you wanna do for head gaskets is look at your tailpipe gases, but it being 20 degrees out today, you're going to have white smoke because we just started it as condensation. So we can't really use that, but I'm looking for excessive smoke. I don't see it. Um, there is some there. We could actually go take a, a whiff of it too. Just use our nose and smell it. Oh, it's warm on my hands. <laughs> Let me warm my hands. It does not smell like coolant. Uh, just a typical exhaust smell, nothing crazy. Cooling fans are on right now, and it's cold air. That's not right. That's not right. What's the temp gauge? Not hot right now. Because my cooling fans are running right now, and they really shouldn't be. Now, some cars, when they're sitting still, have a default strategy where they'll turn cooling fans on. Um, just because the car's not moving and so it's based off vehicle speed. So that may be what's going on here. I'm not totally sure, but I don't like that. When I have cooling fans that come on and the airflow is cold, uh, it's not a good sign. I know you guys aren't gonna be able to see that the fan is running. It is, and the airflow is ice cold. 
Ooh, okay, cool. Get a shot in this bottle. We got some combustion gases possibly. See if you can get in there and see the bubbles. We're gonna take a, we're gonna do a sniff test now. That's enough for me. I know it says to go in the rad overflow, but we're gonna do it here. Pete, let it idle. Now you can hear the fans with it idling. Let's get some fluid here. Do we definitely got bubbles in the overflow. That doesn't tell us everything. I don't even know what to fill it up to. First line or second line? We'll go first line just to save some fluid. So if this turns yellow, Why is that? I would imagine I should be seeing bubbles here. Oh, uh, okay. So this, it's not a perfect um, seal here. Look at this adapter. So there's holes in the side. When I plug this, it still leaks on the side. So it's got a draw, but it's not real, real strong. So, that should be pulling through. That didn't come with any other directions either. I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Yeah, check this out. It's another adapter that does not have those holes. So maybe based on what? Based on your vacuum source you're using? <laughs> Hold that, Pete. Or wait, let's get a shot of it. See what I'm talking about. Two different adapters. One has bleed holes in it. The other does not. I heard that. I don't see my bubbles anymore either. That could have just been low on, low on fluid. There it is. All right, so a quick test of the fluid. It tests for carbon dioxide. And then that fluid should turn back blue again. using the overflow. I'm not a huge fan of the overflow. I still have ice cold air here, Pete. Squeezing the upper rad hose. And that's just making sure that I'm safe to open this rad cap. I don't, there's no flow here, Pete. Whoa, you see that? Whoa. That, that's not, all right, shut this off. No, it's overheating and I pulled coolant in there. I just contaminated the fluid that was in there. Oh yeah. I sure did. Why is that peeing out now? Because there's no suction on it? No, it shouldn't be doing that. It's like there's a leak in the system. <laughs> that shouldn't have leaked all the fluid out. Maybe it opened up. What happened is this thing burped and it, it shot. That was antifreeze that went up in there. That was not cool. But that shouldn't have leaked out. I need to, we need to rinse this out. Pause that, I need to rinse this out, it's contaminated. Uh, we need to do this again. All right, well, a couple things I learned about the tool. Uh, one, there's a check ball in there that keeps the fluid from running back out and that check ball stuck on us. Two, would be you definitely don't wanna fill it to this upper line because it'd pull it into the intake manifold. Uh, so first line for sure. And um, you saw how much it was bubbling, so that's why they give you the different adapters to kind of bleed some of that vacuum off. Um, but we're going to try this again. I believe what we just saw um, was the system burped and it filled this overflow bottle. That's you, you guys didn't see that probably on the camera, but as soon as I pulled this away, the fluid level was full in there. 
and it pulled it all the way back down already. So it's back in the system. Um, that's what you saw. That's why it turned that color. It, it was not, that was not from, uh, that did not change color from a head gasket issue. At least I don't think um, that was antifreeze that got pulled in. So we'll try it again. And um, the fluid level's lower in there now. I'll have to be careful with what we're doing. Let me start it. Get a shot of that. That'll probably be for us. Another Hyundai on the, on the hook. Now we gotta listen to this stupid truck for 10 minutes. All right. Same test. Son of a bitch. That's why they put this. There's too much vacuum. When I seal this off, I just suck coolant back in. I gotta rinse it out again. Learning curve on this tool. So we screwed up again, and what I did this time is, you know, not thinking about what I'm doing with the no bleed adapter here and me putting this right into the, um, the filler neck. Um, I created a vacuum and pulled coolant in again. I contaminated the fluid. So we rinsed it out and now the tow truck driver's gone too. So that noise in the background is better that it's gone. But off camera, Caleb and I were talking and I was trying to explain to him where the CO2 gases are coming from. Uh, of course, we have um, carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, but not to the level it's needed to turn this fluid a different color. You saw my breath, how it changed it. Well, the only way we're gonna have CO2, which is a byproduct of combustion, I'm talking to you guys and I'm talking to my son, um, CO2 gases are a byproduct of an internal combustion engine. So when you have a head gasket failure, you push those gases into the cooling system and that's what we're measuring for. There, there should not be the presence of CO2 gas in the cooling system and the only place it can come from is when the cooling system's compromised uh, in relation to the combustion chamber. So cracked head, head gasket, cracked block, those kind of things. That's what we're looking for. So one more time. This wasn't even one of the cars we were supposed to be messing around with today. It's taking way longer than it should. As usual, with anything, when we turn the camera on, it seems. All right, starting this up. So I'm making sure that the coolant level's lower, that we lost some, which is actually a good thing for the test I'm doing. I just don't like that it's like not pulling enough with this bleed one in here. I don't like it. I, I honestly, it's kind of cool that you can use a vacuum source. My preference is the is the ball that you squeeze. I just can't I can't seal this completely because I'll suck coolant in. The fact that this is not changing is telling us we do not have a head gasket problem. My, my preference has always been to use a gas analyzer and check for hydrocarbons, but I realize that's just not practical anymore. Um, here in Pennsylvania, we do emission testing and the tailpipe emission test has gone by the wayside, so garages don't carry gas analyzers anymore. They used to, every single shop used to have one, so it was a nice easy test to use your gas analyzer and just put the tip of it over and look for hydrocarbons. It was a much more accurate test in my opinion than this one, but this is a decent alternative. And I, I'm not, I'm not getting anything. And that's what Pete was told before this work was done, I guess uh, it, the, the rad was done at another shop at a radiator shop and they said that the block tested good. They did a block test, which is what this is called to some 
and uh, I'm getting the same result. It's, it's not a head gasket failure. But what we have with this is absolutely a flow issue. So I'm giving this one back to Pete, telling him head gasket tests good and that uh, he needs to recheck the work that was done, in particular the thermostat. And uh, you know, I guess we want to make sure that uh, thermostat wasn't maybe inadvertently installed backward or something like that. So um, we're not going any further with this car. I apologize for that with you. I know a lot of you are like, okay, get to the bottom of it. Why is it overheating? This wasn't even one of the cars we were supposed to be working on today. I just wanted to do a real quick head gasket test for you guys and show you how it's done. Uh, that was accomplished. And so we're, we're gonna end this at least at this point and uh, work on these other cars. I'll let Pete know that it tests good for the head gasket. So something that anyone can do out there is to use a simple block tester like we just did. And I have a few other videos showing this. I'll make sure I link them in the description of this one so you guys can watch those too. Uh, I, I have two or three other uh, head gasket test videos that you guys can watch as well. So thanks for joining me guys. Maybe you'll see some more here uh, on this car or at least get some other info. I don't know that for sure. I'm giving this back to Pete. Uh, just final comment on this Suzuki. Uh, while we were here fixing some other cars, Pete went ahead and put another thermostat in this and uh, it fixed it. So thermostat was stuck shut. Um, cooling fan comes on now. It's got nice warm air when the fans come on. Uh, the car is not overheating anymore. It was a flow issue. And uh, you know, honestly, uh, I have to attribute it to just crap parts. I mean, I don't know what kind of stat was put in it, but that thermostat was faulty. It was stuck closed. Um, I'm sorry I didn't get you footage of that. But the, the stuff that we showed with the head gasket test, I think is valuable because a lot of people miss that. And they'll be putting a lot of parts in a car that shouldn't get all those parts and uh, it ends up needing a head gasket. So that chemical kit is really, really the way to go uh, when you don't have a gas analyzer. And again, I have other videos showing this method and uh, I got to show it again here using a little bit different one. I, I, my preference, I still think I like the ball that you squeeze rather than having a vacuum source, but um, that is kind of cool uh, feature that, you know, it's pulling a constant flow through that and you don't have to keep squeezing the ball. But you saw the, the downside of that when you have a little too much vacuum and we pulled all kind of fluid in there. So, um, you know, a little learning curve on some new tools. But if you're interested in one of these chemical kits, I found them on Amazon. I found them uh, on other company websites and I've linked them to both my tools page and on my uh, Scanner Danner Amazon affiliate account. And you'll find those links in the description of this video. I think you can get a chemical kit for around $25. Uh, 25 to 50 dollars for a chemical kit so um, definitely need it at times and now you guys know where to find one guys thanks so much for joining me caleb thanks for being cameraman today guys we'll see you next time